Uh, my name is Eugene Sebecki. I'm the Director of National Sales and uh, Military Business Development for Acro Corporation, which I'll, I'll talk about Acro a little bit at the end, but I wanted to talk about temporary steel bridges and, and why steel is the answer when you have a temporary application. Uh, to go over the overview uh, today, um, discuss a little bit about why temporary, of course, why steel? Uh, some t I'll go over some temporary applications. I'll give you a little bit of background about ACRO and then why ACRO is the answer for a lot of your temporary needs and wants. Uh, again, the challenges right now, I mean, this is, you can pick this up at the uh, ARPTA report as why we're in this situation of we need a lot of bridges. Uh, you know, this data is relatively published all over. I don't want to spend too much time on it, but I thought it was interesting just as a point of reference to say, you know, why uh, we are a, a very important part of the industry as we go forward with the new IIJA uh, Act as we improve our infrastructure. Uh, why temporary steel bridges? Uh, as Dr. Barker pointed out, a lot of it has to do with costs. A lot has to do with speed of assembly and installation. Safety, uh, which is a lot of times is overlooked, but is extremely critical. Versatility of uh, steel, the transportability of steel makes it uh, uh, a very uh, you know, good product to use for your temporary bridge. Sustainability, it can be used over and over again. Durability and reusability. Today, I'm gonna hit on a couple of projects uh, going from detour bypass, which I sort of almost categorize as the same. They're a little bit different, but we'll go over that. Construction, temporary bridges. Uh, military, can't forget the military uh, for temporary bridges, and also hit on some emergency, which is a, a, a big uh, part of temporary applications. Uh, but first to get to the basics, uh, design criteria. Uh, we have a lot of different, you know, br bridge spans that are available uh, all over. You could span a lot of different from short spans to multi spans. Design loading, uh, you know, whatever you design the bridge Two, we can meet or any of the uh, steel bridge suppliers can meet. You just have to tell us what your specification is. Is it ASD, is it LRFD, is it an MLC, which is military load class? Is it a heavy haul bridge? Is it permanent applications? Uh, long as you tell the designer and also the fabricator what you're looking for, more than likely we can come up with a solution. Offer numerous different types of bridge, bridge deck types. Of course, being talking about steel, we always like the uh, orthotropic steel plane deck, which we can do with a, a coating on it or with an asphalt overlay. Uh, timber is also available that can be put on steel bridges. And then you can also just use stone, uh, you know, filling the pans on a bridge. Uh, and guide rail or guard rail, whichever term you like to use, uh, got, they can be, you know, whether it's test level one through test level four, or you also have uh, guide rail systems on temporary bridges that can meet the current MASH guidelines. Again, it is up to the designer and the owner to specify exactly what's required when you're designing your temporary bridge, what type of guide rail or guard rail system you're looking to, because states, authorities, are totally different. We have 50 states, probably 50 different uh, guidelines for uh, guardrail situations for temporary applications. Again, to some typical specifications, like I said, we can do, you know, Ashdell, LRFD, ASD, again, to you tell your temporary bridge uh, designer supplier what you're looking for, and they can come up with a solution. Roadway widths vary all over from single lane bridges up to multi uh, lane bridges. Uh, spans, you know, whether you want a simple span, 30, 40 feet, or you want a multi, multi span uh, bridge, you can go multi spans. Uh, steel can be used for uh, temporary pedestrian bridges. All well, again, various widths, whatever you need for your project, five, six, eight, 12 foot. Again, to single or multiple spans. And, and when you get into multiple spans, again, to whatever the project demands, I mean, you can do a continuous uh, bridge or you can do independent spans, or sometimes even with steel structures, you can use what uh, we call broken spans. Again, to bridge deck, 
we love steel orthotropic uh, decks because we're in the steel business. And then, uh, of course, driving service options, you can actually put asphalt on top of steel. You can put asphalt on top of timber. You can supply anti-skid on top of steel or, you know, whatever you want, or you can just use a plain wood deck. Uh, whatever you want, we can come up with the solution. First go around, you don't want to talk about detour or bypass. Uh, the reason I say detour or bypass, because sometimes... People say detour, you're detouring and you're going in at some sort of set distance around the crossing or a bypass, you're going very continuous to the existing bridge. And why you want to use a detour or bypass? Well, first, you know, it's accelerated bridge construction, ABC, ABC, we talk about that all the time. And then it's very, very critical. And steel gives the best answer for ABC construction. Uh, steel also gives you the versatility for your temporary access. Steel will give you uh, different lengths, widths, and strengths, and it's easily uh, customizable. Safety, big, big point. I'll talk a lot about safety because safety is a big issue. You're using detours and bypass that a lot of people used to think of secondarily why we're using a, a detour or bypass, but it's it's been turning into the primary reason now for uh, detours and bypass. And economical, which is also the bottom line for the stakeholders. And, you know, these detour and bypasses, you know, going back historically, I mean, I've, I've been doing this over 20 years. It used to be a lot on secondary roads, but now, you know, we, we've, we're on mainline interstates for temporary steel detour bridges all th in every 50 states. So it is an acceptable mode of uh, uh, construction for mainline interstate project and I'll go over some of those too. One of them is like this uh, Texas DOT project that uh, a temporary bridge was put in down a few years ago. I, they wanted a temporary modular steel bridge and the main criteria was that they needed to keep uh, the traffic going because it was a hurricane evacuation route and they needed to keep the same uh, width uh, for the bridge and the same uh, load rating. So here, this bridge is 130 foot clear span from barrier to bearing, no supports needed uh, to take the traffic. And the width was 24 feet between uh, the guide rail or curbs as it was set up on this. A little bit more uh, difficult type project. This was in Massachusetts on uh, Interstate 91, again, a mainline interstate project. Uh, not only did it was steel the answer for the bridge itself, but what was also used for the temporary steel towers. You can see the towers at the bottom supporting the bridge. Uh, a little bit of interest too. You can see that you know we were able to accommodate the skew requirement for the for the, the piers, so the towers are skewed. Again, this is all temporary work. The bridge was uh, two lanes, thirty foot uh, between curbs. It was designed to HL ninety three. And the uh, guardrail uh, was designed for test level four on the system. Again, it was not uh, crash tested, but it was designed to test level four. Depending on the applications, you can either have a MASH uh, compliant system or you can just have a, a guide rail system that's designed to the required test level. Again, too, it's up to the, to the owner and to the steel bridge uh, supplier to come up with the correct solution. Another interesting project that sort of shows you the safety is a still temporary bridge down in Southern New Jersey uh, that goes over 295 and uh, Route 42. Uh, it's a 450 foot two span bridge. Uh, it's 24 foot curb to curb. Again, to it as a TL4 design guide rails, but this is a good example of what happens when you can use a temporary steel bridge when you're reconstructing an existing bridge? You get all the traffic all away from the construction. Stage construction is a very dangerous uh, you know, method of construction because your workers are very close to the traffic that's going on back and forth. This photograph is a good example of you totally remove the traffic from your construction site. All the construction now can, can uh, proceed at a, at a highly, you know, uh, safety, you know, uh, great safety, great speed, because you're not worried at all about the ongoing traffic that's now been moved off to the side of the bridge. Of course, a, a lot has to do with 
you know, the ability to right away. Uh, so, you know, again, to get involved a lot with the, the design community. What's interesting about this bridge too, is not only is, does the temporary steel bridge support traffic, there's also a cantilever pedestrian sidewalk on one side to carry the pedestrians. And then the opposite side, there's also another pedestrian uh, uh, sidewalk that's not for pedestrians, but it's actually designed to carry all the utilities over the bridge. So it not only acts as a vehicular bridge, but it's also a uh, utility support structure. This one's a little bit different, uh, again, because it's a 200 foot, uh, two, excuse me, 250 foot clear span bridge. <clears throat> again, two lanes, 30 foot between the curbs. Uh, again, clear span, that means no support. It's 250 foot clear that was put in by Colorado Department of Transportation on this project. Again, designed for HL93 with a TL4 design guide rail system. Uh, very interesting project. It, the way it was built, which was nice about these temporary bridge structures is they can be uh, put in place by launching. They were built on rollers and then pushed across the gap, thereby eliminating the need for heavy construction cranes uh, to lift up the structure and put it into place. So uh, again, the versatility of using steel is getting these extremely long clear span bridges. Like, you know, you know people will sometimes say, well, what, what's the capacity of a temporary steel bridge? Well, you know, multi-span uh, bridges or single span bridges, you know, we can get some very long lengths. We can also build them very quickly. This one it was in Hawaii, again, too, which uh, tells you, you know, how easy it is to transport these components over long distances. Uh, you know, this is this steel type of bridge system is the original bridge in a box. It could be shipped in 40 foot shipping containers. So enable, enables you to get into ports like the port of the uh, Willy Willy in uh, Kauai. Uh, this was a two lane system. Again, two a clear span of 210 foot designed for an ADT of over 12,000 uh, cars per day, and also was, was put in in a very short time frame of uh, less than uh, two weeks, you know, approximately eight days to get this bridge up and operational. This is a, an example, if you, you take a look at it, you can see the uh, guide rail system that's used on this bridge. This is the TL4 design system. It's a uh, box tube system uh, on 10 foot spacing uh, which is mandated by the design of the bridge itself. Another unique structure we did in Utah a few years ago, temporary bridge structure. Uh, that sort of answered the call for this bridge that they were rebuilding on, on 80 outside of uh, uh, Park City, Utah, because of the grade differential, they really couldn't do a diversion of the traffic uh, to accommodate the rebuilding of the bridge. So they needed to put this bridge on the outside of it on very severe slopes, again, to using temporary steel towers that were also supplied. Uh, again, to another example of a project for Interstate DOT in uh, Ride, New York, on uh, Interstate 95, uh, that was a temporary bridge for two years uh, in place. A uh, little bit unique about this project is that they were able to accommodate a 4% uh, percent cross slope with the asphalt on the steel bridge deck. Again, a multiple span bridge. This one had a width for three lanes of traffic, 36 foot curb to curb. New York State at that time was still uh, designing all their bridges to HS25. So that's what this bridge was designed for. This is sort of an indication of, of why a lot of temporary steel structures are used. This is on uh, Interstate 10, south of Tucson. <clears throat> it's a 200 foot clear span, again, 30 foot curb to curb. What they actually did is they put this bridge in the median between the east and the west bounds of Interstate 10. If you've ever been south of Tucson, you'll know exactly where this sits. Uh, and the reason they put it in the median is that they were able to first rebuild the uh, eastbound bridge and by diverting all the traffic to the temporary steel structure in the median. And then when that bridge was built, they, re, they closed the opposite direction and opened the bridge up until they could 
uh, rebuild the other bridge. So back and forth by putting the temporary bridge in the median between the east and westbound structures on I-10. Again, too, if you, you know I-10 interstate mainline traffic, it's carrying you know heavy loads, so it had to be designed for full HL-93, plus every once in a while some uh, permanent loads that were required to go over the bridge. So, you know, again, the bridges can be designed to, you know, take HS-25, HS-20, HL-93, and of course, you know, permanent loads. This is just a little bit different picture telling you the same thing in a project in New Jersey. You can see where the temporary steel bridge was put in the median. Uh, this is a three lane bridge. And so again, they use the same concept. Uh, they rebuilt the westbound structure first and then they rebuilt the eastbound structure, thereby keeping all the workers away from the traffic, which is again, the big safety uh, reason for using these structures. You can see the workers are far removed from the traffic. Uh, very safe conditions, and not only for the workers, but also takes the motorists out of play of uh, going astray errantly and causing catastrophic uh, casualties. This bridge is a little bit different. Uh, it's kind of hard to see. You can see the guide rail system on it. It was just a thrive beam system mounted to the truss, which uh, gave them a design level to uh, a TL level three. Uh, another project going over railroad tracks and a bridge. This is a single lane that was on another mainline interstate uh, in 81 in New York State. Uh, again, on temporary steel towers, long bridge, six spans. Uh, these were all continuous spans over the roadway and the railroad tracks. Uh, and with a single lane, these were the actually the exit ramps coming off of interstate. Uh, 81 in outside of uh, uh, Binghamton, New York. Uh, design low is for HS20, again, too, because at that time, New York State was still doing ASD uh, HS20 or HS25 loading. This one also had a, a TL3 guardrail. Now, the main thing is, too, which is nice about steel, it gives you the opportunity to work with the railroads. If you've ever been involved with a uh, putting a, a, a bridge over an active rail system, the the main, it's very difficult to get the approvals of the railroads. And so with the designs of these type of steel structures, it's, it, you know, it still takes a time, but you know, there, there's been enough work done that we, we can get the, uh, the railroads actually buy in and, and putting these systems uh, over a rail, active rail lines with minimum closure. I mean, that's the big line. You, you can't close rails for more than sometimes half hour at a time. They give you very short windows. Airport construction with the new uh, infrastructure act. There's a lot of work being done on terminals and uh, steel temporary bridges are great for working on uh, terminals. Again, too, because they can go in quickly with the least amount of impact to the terminal. Uh, this one was at LaGuardia Airport, where we did a, a series of bridges on the $8 billion reconstruction. Uh, and this structure was actually in front of the Delta terminals that they reconstructed, again, with a width of uh, 30 foot uh, and a total of six spans of, uh, on this bridge. Again, too, most of these, uh, these spans were all uh, continuous over the piers. Uh, railroad bridges, besides going over them, we also, also can use steel to carry the rail lines uh, if the rails have to be built. This one was for a CX line in, in uh, Ohio, uh, clear span length of 125 foot, carrying full Cooper E80 loading. We did uh, another one, uh, Barclay Center, if anybody's a basketball fan, this is when they were building the Barclay Center where the Dets play. Uh, the Atlantic Yards, which was the Metropolitan Transit Authority, had their yard right by the uh, where the Barclay Center was going to go. So they had to redo all the uh, train yards coming into it. So uh, the steel was the ultimate solution to uh, actually give, give a, a temporary detour for their rail cars. Uh, subway cars. In the subway cars, of course, they were a little bit lighter, so we get away with a Cooper E60 loading for the uh, subway cars. Also in Canada, uh, a lot of temporary bridges are used in Canada. This is a structure for in London, Ontario, another 
Cooper E80 rail bridge uh, uh, with full 70 foot clear span. Then we get into a little bit more crazy temporary steel bridges. Uh, this is a, a movable bridge that was outside of Boston in, in service for about 14 years. Uh, a couple of unique things about this bridge. It, it, it's total bridging, it's dual bridges. You can see there's two structures going over it. So you had a, you had a north and a southbound structure. This is outside of Quincy Mass. Uh, this is a vertical lift bridge. Everything was temporary on this project. If you look just to the north part of this slide, you can sort of see the uh, piers for the old Baskill Bridge. What had happened when they started construction of this bridge, originally this temporary structure was only supposed to be in place for about four years. But when they got it to the Baskill, they said, oh goodness, we have a lot of problems with this Baskill structure. Uh, we're, we can't rehab it, we got to replace it. So they wanted to know how they could upgrade the uh, fatigue life on this bridge to not go from a, a four to five year structure, but a 15 to uh, 20 year structure. And which is the beauty of using steel as your uh, component for temporary bridge is that it could be modified very easily to increase, increase the, uh, the fatigue life of the structure from five years to 20 years. Uh, so it could be changed. Again, too, interesting structure. Uh, it's over 2,500 feet of, feet of total roadway. Uh, there's over 60,000 bolts in, the, in these bridges and approximately 10,000 tons of steel that was used for these twin structures. It since has been taken out, the new bicycle has been open. And to talk about the reusability rate, recyclability of this bridge, this bridge has been broken up and shipped and, and, and been used in projects in Haiti and other parts around the globe in diff different sections, not as the structure you see it here, but there was a bridge in Haiti that was 120 foot long where they actually used part of the structure. So again, to the reusability of steel, you know, is, 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 is why this, this bridge was the right answer uh, for MassDOT in this project in Quincy, Mass. Uh, Massachusetts also has a lot of these Baskill bridges. Again, two, instead of uh, rebuilding, you know, closing the bridge down, we were able to come up with a design for a Baskill structure. Again, two, all temporary. It was only in place for, I think, two and a half to three years to Martha's Vineyard. Again, too, if you know Mar where Martha's Vineyard is, it's very difficult to get product in and out of it. So the versatility of using steel was very evident in getting stuff onto the island uh, to build this structure, which was used as a, they rebuilt the original Baskill Bridge, which you can sort of see the approach roadways just on the south of, of the existing, uh, this temporary structure here. Temporary pedestrian bridges are also can be used steel construction. Uh, this is a simple box bridge. Uh, use they use quite a bit all the time because of versatility for steel. Uh, you can use steel towers, walkways, and, and get whatever you need for temporary pedestrian bridges. Construction is another uh, good use for temporary steel bridges. You can come up with different uh, length widths, you know, load carrying capacities, whatever needed, you know, because now you're talking off-road vehicles, you're not talking your, your normal highway vehicles. So you can come up with a design that's going to be able to handle a lot of different uh, construction uh, vehicles, like this one in Massachusetts, which was designed for some heavy loads as they were rebuilding some power lines. Uh, this was one in, in Colorado. Uh, where they were doing a development and they needed to go over the canal. Now, if you, you see this too, you, it, it's this deck on this bridge is actually uh, a crane mat uh, deck and with uh, using just timber curbs. The reason it's a crane mat deck is because the wheel loads are very high on the scraper that you see going over the bridge. So we had to come up with a, a steel deck that was a little bit more versatile. So we could use the steel skeleton and then put crane mats as the deck for this bridge. And again, showing the versatility of uh, steel structures for your solutions. Uh, a lot of power line transmission work has been used on it too. I wanted to touch base on this one just a little bit. This is a very unique site access bridge. Uh, this is for all you uh, 
Formula One fans, uh, if you don't know, Formula One is coming to Las Vegas this November. Uh, so as part of the track, the track is going to go on the whole strip. So what happens when they put the track on the strip is that you isolate everything in the center of the strip. So they had to come up with a solution, number one, for police and fire access to, uh, you know, you can't close off the center of the strip. So they had to come up with a series of ways to access the interior of the, the circuit that they're putting in in Las Vegas. Uh, the solution was to come up with a series of uh, steel bridges. And so they're actually going to be building four temporary steel structures to go over the uh, raceway. Uh, that's <laughs> the definition of temporary for four days of racing. So these bridges are going to be put in place for only a four day race that's going to happen later on in this November. So these structures are all going in They're They're all designed for uh, HL 93. They're all anywhere from like 660 to 740 foot at length. Uh, they're all going to be built on temporary steel towers going over it. But I mean, this is the, the epitome of, of a temporary bridge. They're spending a lot of money for a four day event. Uh, <clears throat> you can use beam bridges for simple access going over. These are just you know, almost like reinforced rafts uh, going over to take heavy loads. You can put some guide rail systems on the side. Uh, they can be you know put in place relatively quickly because they're supplied in, in certain lengths. It's almost like just picking up a 45 foot piece of steel, six foot wide, and dropping it into place and gives you a, a quick temporary access. Uh, steel can also be used for pipe and utility bridges, uh, what, you know, temporary applications as you go under construction, again, too, because they're readily uh, available and they can be designed forever, you, whatever you need, and also be supplied on steel towers as this one to go over existing roadway. Uh, have to make sure we, we bring into the military uh, into play because the military loves it because they look at temporary steel as something that's commercially off the shelf or is what they call COTS bridging. So uh, a lot of this bridging gets its history from World War II because it would use temporary steel bridges as the Allies went back into Germany. And they're still used quite a bit today, whether it be for floating bridges as this one in Iraq, and then can take very heavy loads, uh, which this one being tested here down in Aberdeen for an NLC loading of 120 tank, one 150 ton wheel. So extremely heavy loads for the US military. Again, too, just to sort of talk about emergencies again, too, because it's very important for temporary steel bridge construction because it's accelerated, uh, rapid assembly installation, you know, customizable for any widths and lengths. And you have, you know, a lot of different carrying capacities. Uh, just go through a couple of case histories real quick. One in British Columbia about a year ago. This is 260 foot clear span, unsupported single lane bridge with a two lane, uh, I mean, TL2 guardrail system. Uh, one of my favorites, the I 5 bridges in uh, Skagit. Uh, over Skagit River in Washington, just north of Seattle, where two bridges were actually put into place. This is actually a, a truck went down and hit the overhead trusses of the existing bridge and dropped the bridge in place. Uh, these two bridges, uh, side by side, 160 foot in length, two lane 24, were actually put in place in 15 days. And the reason it took 15 days is because we lost five days due to the NTSB uh, closing down the job site for uh, investigation of the original collapse. So it actually only took about uh, seven to eight days to build these two bridges, 160 foot in length. Uh, had to throw this one in for Wyoming for the, the great doctor. If you're a bike rider, uh, this happened a few years ago with the 75th anniversary around the corner for the uh, the Harley Rally in Sturgis, uh, this bridge on US 85 was uh, undermined and uh, collapsed. Uh, luckily, Wyoming DOT owned a bunch of uh, their temporary bridging supplemented by a purchase of some more, and they were able to get this 
200 foot clear span structure up and running in a matter of weeks uh, so the bikers could get to the rally in Sturgis. Um, again, too, with uh, flooding, uh, this is one in uh, Nebraska on the Spencer Dam. This was a 600 foot multi span bridge, all 600 foot uh, continuous spans, single lanes, TL4 guide rail system. Uh, Another emergency project in, in uh, Connecticut on I-95. This was one that was a little bit interesting because uh, this bridge collapsed on a Thursday night uh, and then bridge was being delivered on Saturday and was open to traffic on a Monday for a three lane uh, bridge, 80 foot in length. Remote applications are done. If anybody's ever been on the road to Hana, you know it's a very windy road as you make your way to Hana. The, the Pahihi Bridge is about halfway uh, out on that drive to Hana. So very difficult to get product out there. So steel was the answer when they had an earthquake and damaged uh, a couple of the bridges. So they were able to get this 140 uh, foot bridge out there, single lane with a HL93 guide rail system to uh, reopen the road to Hana. Louisiana Department of Transportation and Development uh, uses quite a bit of uh, uh, temporary steel bridges. This is in response to a uh, Hurricane Ida that took out a, a bridge in Southern Louisiana. Uh, and then again to hurricane response, this is going back into 2004, I believe it was. Uh, again, to Florida Department of Transportation realizes that the, uh, the advantage of owning temporary steel bridges in their inventory, they have approximately 10,000 lineal feet of bridging. So they were able to respond to this uh, bridge washout on, the, on I-10 in Pensacola within a few weeks because they had the bridging sitting in their inventories ready to ship out. About a year later, had same type of uh, washout happen. Everybody heard about Katrina, but uh, I don't know if that many people know that also the I-10 bridge over Lake Pontchartrain was also washed out and they were able to put in over 4,000 foot of temporary steel bridging in under three months to reopen I-10 over Lake Pontchartrain. All right. And then one that I personally was involved in many years ago was the temporary access bridge into Ground Zero down at the World Trade Center. Uh, this bridge, 460 foot multi-span access bridge into the uh, base of where the tunnels used to stand was actually uh, constructed and put into place within 30 days to assist in the uh, recovery and final rebuild of the Twin Towers. These things, you know, we don't only get emergencies in North America. This is an example of a temporary steel bridge that was used in, in Italy. Uh, you can see the bridge just to the left of the slide here that was washed out, if you can see that. This was put up quickly, 180 foot clear span, uh, again, you know, 24 foot, and this was designed to Eurico. Again, too, to summarize this up, I know I've thrown a lot of stuff at you. I'm trying to talk to my, my fastest car salesman speak. Uh, availability is why steel cost, uh, it's sustainable, it's less time to put it in, you have no form work to be involved with, you have better quality control when you're, especially with prefabricated steel elements, uh, no, no negative impact by weather, fabrication, precise jigs, lighter weights, uh, steel is mostly recyclable, you know, Again, too, you could uh, hit all these point, finer points of using it. And then, too, to get to the commercial, uh, why Acro? We, we've been doing this for, for quite a long time. We have a proprietary system that's been proven. We manufacture everything in the US. Uh, we customize it to what you need. We have a staff of engineers on staff ready to help you. We do everything in hot dip galvanized to, to eliminate corrosion and minimize maintenance rapid installation and we also offer engineering support from start to vision uh, to finish and we uh, we're work a lot with partnership uh, again to acro was established in 51 uh, we're headquartered in Parsippany, new jersey we manufacture in milton pennsylvania and also in litany gloucestershire 
um, plus staging yards in Lafayette, New Jersey, Eden, North Carolina, Centrally, Washington. And again, too, a lot of our technology stems back to 1938 Bailey Bridging. And that's it for my presentation. Thank you for your attention.